Hi, I'm Shalane from TSC Tuition and this is the second video of four looking at persuasive techniques. Today we'll be looking at emotive language. The article or the speech that we're going to look at today is by Anthony Albanese uh, and his address to the Gama Festival which sort of outlined what the referendum for the voice to parliament is going to look like. Now, first of all, emotive language, let's have a think about what it is exactly. I think the easiest way to think about emotive language is to think about it as language that is designed to make you feel things. It is language that is designed to appeal to your emotions. They're words that are meant to, you know, make you feel something rather than think something. Now, I think emotive language is a pretty broad term. I think lots of things can be emotive language as well as something else, like an attack, for example, could be an attack as well as emotive language because usually when authors or speakers are attacking someone or something, they're getting pretty riled up about it and they want you, the listener, the audience, to feel that way as well. So by no means is emotive language its own separate category that has no overlaps with other uh, persuasive techniques or devices. It really goes hand in hand with a lot of other uh, persuasive techniques and devices. So. Uh, the link to the transcript that I'm looking at will be down in the description box, so look along with me. The specific section that I want to look at um, for emotive language is sort of right at the beginning. He sort of, um, you know, paid his respects to the Indigenous people there um, in his audience, and then he's sort of like... The, sort of given a little bit of an introduction. He's then sort of um, introduced a few of his colleagues who are there um, accompanying him um, for his address. And then he then sort of makes this statement, right? And he says, the Uluru statement is a hand outstretched, a moving show of faith in Australian decency and Australian fairness from people who have been given every reason to forsake their hope in both. I am determined as a government, as a country, that we grasp that hand of healing, we repay that faith, we rise to the moment, to work with you in lifting the words off the page and lifting the whole nation up. And then he goes on to talk about what that might look like, right? Lifting words off the page and lifting the whole nation up. Now, I think this is a great example of emotive language because these are words that are designed to sort of, you know, like have swelling music in the background, something very patriotic, you know, lots of brass bands, that kind of orchestral upswell of music to go along with it. Specifically, if we look at the words, right, the Uluru statement is a hand outstretched, right? That's a funny phrasing. A more natural version of that would be um, the Uluru statement is an outstretched hand towards someone, right? That would be a more natural phrasing uh, of that phrase, but uh, the ways that he's um, got it there, a hand outstretched. The, it's designed to sort of put the emphasis on the word outstretched to, uh, to have a pause um, right at the end of that word so his audience, his listeners can sort of hold on to it and think about it a little bit, you know, just a split second more. And then he goes on, a moving show of faith. This is a lovely, you know, very aspirational, inspirational kind of phrasing of faith in Australian decency and Australian fairness. So there's an appeal to patriotism there, Australian is repeated twice. Um, and then also using those words, Australian decency, Australian fairness, which are very sort of, you know, what we commonly think of as Australian values, right, from people who have been given every reason to forsake their hope in both. Forsake is a strong word. Forsake, you don't use that word lightly. Um, and also in a sentence like this, I think it, again, it would, it would be more natural, more casual to say to give up their hope rather than to forsake. You know, forsake has sort of very bi biblical kind of connotations to it. Um, and his use of that word here, in addition to outstretched, in addition to moving show of faith, you know, all of this sort of comes together to make his audience feel things, whether this is feeling um, a sense of hope or feeling uh, gratitude or feeling pride. Uh, remember that he is 
at the Gama Festival, he's probably speaking to an audience primarily of Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Um, he's not really talking to white Australians um, at this audience here. So let's keep that in mind as we go on and analyse. So he says, I am determined as a government, as a country, that we grasp that hand of healing, there's a lovely alliteration there, hand of healing, we repay that faith, we rise to the moment. Rise is a lovely, you know, cue the, cue the brass band kind of feeling. We rise to that moment. It's very strong in terms of uh, the emotions that it's designed to provoke, right? It's designed to make the audience feel like we can do this, right? We are capable. It's like, you know, the yes we can uh, Obama campaign. It's designed to make you feel hopeful, to feel optimistic, right? And then he goes on to work with you in lifting the words off the page and lifting the whole nation up. Again, there's a repetition there with the lifting Right. But in that repetition, it is designed again to make his audience feel hopeful, to make them feel optimistic, to make them feel like, you know, change is in the air, change is imminent, change is here and we can do it. Yes, we can. So how would we write this right in an analysis? I'm assuming that I'm not writing about this particular section in the introduction. I'm assuming we're going to write about this in a body paragraph and that the start of the body paragraph is about the function of this opening section of the speech. I might write something like um, Albanese speech incorporates multiple instances of emotive language. So I've identified the technique here where he lords the Uluru statement as a hand outstretched and a moving show of faith uh, when they could have forsaken their hope instead. So giving lots of quotes, lots of um, examples of what I think an emotive language is in this section. Um, and then now comes the explanation of like what it's meant to do, right, to the audience. So I might write something like Albanese's emotive language appeals to the pride of his First Nations audience in continuing to hope. I could quote there again. Um, despite the setbacks and his promise that we repay the faith and rise to the moment implies again his admiration for his audience's resilience and appeals to their hope as First Nations people that their generosity has not been in vain. So here I'm writing quite explicitly about, well, what is this meant to make them feel, right? So um, notice that I haven't really used make them feel emotions <laughs> or make them feel feelings or provoke emotions is another phrase I see a lot. If we're going to write about emotive language, we need to be very specific about what it is that the audience is meant to feel. So here, is it pride? Is it hope? Is it um, a sense of identity and who they are, etc, etc. And then so now that I've talked about, well, what is it supposed to make the audience feel? Um, I can now move on to the why. So why would the author or why would Anthony Albanese want his audience to feel this way at the beginning of his speech? Um, so I might write uh, the placement of these emotive words and phrases serve to clarify that Albanese is on the side of the attendees of the Gama Festival. So again, being very specific about who the audience is so that he can garner as much support as possible for his later outlining of the proposal for the voice to parliament referendum. So bearing in mind that, you know, this is at the beginning of his speech, he's trying to drum up some support. He's trying to make him, you know, likable, right, to his audience who might not like him very much. <laughs> um, and given his audience, um, he's trying to make it very clear that he appreciates all that First Nations people have done through the Uluru Statement and, you know, through all those consultative processes and that he really appreciates it. He's there for them. He's trying to repay that. He's trying to make sure that they haven't done all this work in vain. So that's what I'm writing here. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, remember to sign up to all of our social media channels so that you are notified when we drop new content. We also have a newsletter for parents and tutors who are looking for advice and strategies to help their teens in their English studies. So make sure you sign up to that. We also have an online shop with vocabulary expansion packs that you might be interested in as well. All links are in the description below. And if you're looking to for one-to-one uh, tutoring support, please contact us and let's have a chat about how we can support you. Thanks for watching.